Mark chapter 2, and then I'll read verses 1 to 12. Mark chapter 2, and then verses 1 to 12. And then I'm going to read Matthew 17, 19 to 20. Mark chapter 2. Are you there? Are you there? Oh, you are finding it difficult to find Mark. Mark should be easy to find. And the Bible says, and again he entered Capernaum. Who was he that entered Capernaum? Okay. After some days, and it was odd that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them. Not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Then they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, what did he see? The Bible says when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his heart that they are reasoning thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your heart? Which is easier to say. Your sins are forgiven you or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise. Take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed and went out in the presence of them all. So that all were amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw anything like this. Go back to the book of Matthew. 17 verses 19 to 20. Matthew 17 verses 19 to 20. Are you there? Are you there? Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said to him, Why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief. For assuredly I say to you, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go except by prayer and fasting. Jesus' disciples could not cast out a demon from a boy. And so the question arose, why couldn't we do it? And Jesus was very clear. He said, because of your unbelief. For if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there. And it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. For a few minutes this morning, with the joy of God, I want to teach on what I've titled, Faith That Moves Mountain. Help me look at your neighbor and say, Faith That Moves Mountains. Mountains. Faith that moves mountains. Faith that moves mountains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you because the entrance of the world will give light, give understanding to us simple folks. Father, we've come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of every writer and I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. Let us walk according to your counsel for our lives. In Jesus' name, and amen. Please be seated. Now, help me look at your neighbor. And help me tell your neighbor the title of what I'm preaching on. All right, I thought you'd be louder than that. Faith that moves. Faith that moves. Keep saying this. Are you tired? Do you have the faith that moves mountains? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. I love that. Let me begin by sharing a little story with you. Many years ago, 
When I say many years ago, I actually really this time mean many years ago. I was in secondary school. I, would, I still remember I was in secondary school. And I went to church one day, and my pastor preached on Matthew 17. And he said that if you have faith, you can move mountains. I still remember it like yesterday. And I remember that day, I left church with my brother, my sisters, and some church members who were on our way. We normally, we walk back to our house somewhere around Mokola. Okay, to know precisely. The church was at Oshutoku Avenue in Bodija. And um, I recall that there was, to me as a young boy, something that looked like a hill, like a mountain. I grew up and I found out that it was not so much of a mountain. But it was tall, it was high, and it was made of stones. So it was a mountain. Hilly at that place at Oshutoku. And I recall that we just finished service. And I went there that day. And we were going. And that thing was beside me. And when I say it's not that hilly, it's actually tall. It's actually high. And I recall as a young child, I spoke to that hill. And I said, you hill, the word of the Lord is true. Be moved in the name of Jesus. Come down in the name of Jesus. Young boy. And I left. And this was my testimony. Three months later, we were going home and I found out that somebody was building in that place. And for them to build, they were leveling the rock. So they started pulling it down. That day, I saw a reality of God. Because as far as I was concerned, it was me that spoke for that to happen. They broke the rock. They broke it down and there stood where a rock used to stand, a house. A testimony to me as a young child. After that day, you could not tell me that God does not exist. After that day, somebody said, how, how do you say that was you? As a young child, I believe it was me because they were not building anything on that side. In fact, it never looked like something you can build on. You, you know, there were houses in that, in that in, in Bodhija Avenue beside it. But there was this, just this rock that just stood by itself. It never looked like anybody was going to buy it. But then I spoke to it. I spoke to it. And that thing came down. By my words. When I lie down today, I still see that rock. I still remember where I was when I spoke to it. That's why I don't listen to people who say, don't see teenagers. Just let them be jumping around and dancing. They can't understand. I was an SS1 boy and I understood that. And I spoke to it. And I knew that that was me, even when it happened. Listen, dear friends. Faith that moves mountain is not just faith in the head. Or even faith in the heart. And that will shock you. Because many times we have taught it that you need to also have faith in the heart. Uh, because faith does not exist in the head. Faith only exists in your heart. Now follow me. Yes, faith is in the heart. But faith that moves mountain is not just faith in the heart. It is faith in the heart that has been converted even to tangible expression. I say it this way. Faith is an intangible force. But for faith to move mountain, faith has to be converted from being intangible to being tangible. Thank God I'm not in a hurry today. Amen. So faith has to, faith that moves mountain has to be converted from an intangible force to a tangible force. Somebody say, oh, okay, okay, tangible, intangible. What are they saying? Let me explain it to you. Intangible, it, it is an intangible thing. When somebody hates you, you can't hold it. Can you hold it? You know when many times when you say, ah, oh, that guy hates me. The reason you know that that guy hates you is because it has been converted to tangible. He probably spoke to you somehow. He probably got angry with you. That's why you said he hates you. I found out for every one person that you think hates you, there are 200 others you don't know. The same thing goes with love. Have you found out that a man can be loving a lady in this auditorium right now and the lady will not know? Amen. Oh, you don't believe that in church? 
Oh, guys love on people. Ah, before Dio went and spoke to it, he, he had fallen in love, love since. Amen. Amen. So, the time that they come and speak to you, and then you now say, ah, that guy loves me. Why? Because you are now seeing the expressions of it. It was there before the expressions came. The person had really loved you before. Somebody following what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is that there are activities that makes that love to be seen. If somebody loves you, he will call you. He will speak to you. He want to be in your place. That is how you know that somebody loves you. Is that not so? If somebody is, and, and what have you done? You have moved from intangible to tangible. Faith is also an intangible force. But for your faith to work, your faith must be converted from an intangible force to a tangible force. Somebody understand that to that extent. Speak to me if you do. Faith in the art cannot be seen. But for faith to move mountains, it must be translated to tangible things. It was what the Bible means when it says, when Jesus saw their faith. Can I ask you, can Jesus see your faith? Saw so is a word we used when something ta is tangible and perceivable. You did not see oxygen. But if I ask you, did you see your neighbor this weekend, you probably will say yes. Why? Because it was tangible. You saw the person. It's not guess. The Bible, say when, the Bible did not say when Jesus guessed their faith. The Bible did not say when Jesus thought about their faith. The scripture says, when Jesus saw their faith. It means that their faith was perceivable. How did their faith become perceivable? Because their faith had an action to it. Did you get that? Their faith had an act to it. What was their act? They heard about the Christ. They opened the silly. And they dropped that person. And as Jesus saw their friend dropping... What he saw was, what you will see is an invalid friend, is an invalid guy, and desperate friends. Is that not so? But what Jesus saw was their faith. Therefore, for faith to be seen, faith must have, must have outward expressions and realities. If your faith will be seen, your faith must have outward expressions and realities. Certain men broke the ceiling. Now that is faith. If you only say, I believe God. I believe God. You will stay in that position. Nothing will change. Faith in the art is not enough. There must be tangible expressions. Something I can hold on to. And say, yeah, that's the faith speaking. Have you read the event of the man, of the woman of faith? That general of old called Katrin Kuman. Katrin Kuman will hold crusades. And in Canada and in the US. And many people will bring their invalid, you know, their sickness and there is invalid. For doctors to say somebody has become invalid, it means that person probably cannot walk, the cancer is eating deep and all of that. That person is an invalid. And people will bring their invalid friends, mothers, daughters to that crusade. Sometimes they will drive 400 kilometers to get to Kachekuman Crusades. And many times those people will be on stretchers. And they will be on wheelchairs. But when we speak about such miracles, what we say is that Kachekuman is such a powerful woman of God. She's such an anointed woman of God, but we miss it. Because when Jesus sees those things, what Jesus sees is the faith of the people who drove miles and miles to bring their friends to Christ, to that crusade. What Jesus sees is the desperation and the faith of the people. There was an act to their faith. They weren't just praying, Lord, heal the cancer. Take the cancer away. No. They made a decision and drove for miles and miles to get them to Kajikuman Crusade. Why? Because they believe that if they can get there, Healing will take place. There is an act to faith. If your faith will move mountain, there is an act to faith. 
And I recall many years ago, I like to say many years ago. I recall about three years ago, the Lord had told our family, we should move to Lagos. Right? And many of you have heard that story before. But this time around, it's not about me. It's not about the 10,000 and the 3K. Right? This time around, uh, we are going to move, and we started the church sometimes in May 2022. Not sometimes, May 1st, 2022, we started the church. But my wife was still working actively in Eloring. And so I would come to church on a Sunday, and people would be asking me, Where is Mama? Where's your wife? And I said, She's not around. And she'll be with us next week. Oh, she's not around. She, 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 ah, she traveled. But I knew that she did not travel any travel. She had gone back to work. I wanted to do that transfer to make it work. And they told us it was impossible. Now listen to me, because I want to show you there's an act to faith. And they said, no, it cannot work. We did all the things we wanted to do because they said, oh, if you want to get her into a branch, it's easier. But to get her into the head office, it's next to impossible. So, but God said, come to Lagos. And everywhere... Abraham went, Sarah followed. All right, that's the scripture about pattern. So what did I do? So we decided, okay, she should take a leave. So she took a leave, three weeks leave. And we went to Elorin and carried all of our loads. Praise God. We carried all of our loads. We only left a mattress very not in very good condition and we carried everything i recall i was speaking to a pastor and the pastor said but that's risky but faith is risky so i told her i said if it does not work although you are not coming back here but if it does not work you'll be sleeping on this mattress here. the children's school we stopped it and i moved and he looked at me and said, it's risky. How can you take care of these girls alone? I said, I will not. God will. But he said, we should live. We are living. Now, you know, you also have calculations, people you know. I can't be this long in ministry. I don't know people. Hey, Amen. So I called somebody and I said, sir, he's supposed to be like a director, very high somebody, an ED in a particular bar. I said, sir, we, this is what happened. This is what's going on. He said, okay, I will go to the head office and see what I can do. So he went to the head office. And so, but we can pray. We can believe in God. Now, two days to the end of the leave. Somebody said two days. A letter of transfer came. So I called the man. And I said, sir, thank you. He said, for what? I said, for the transfer. He said, I did not tell you. I went there, they told me it's impossible. I spoke to all their directors, they told me there is no space. So, if anything had happened, please, it's not me, it's God. Thank God for people who are very, you know some people will take that glory. He said, it's not me, it's God. Completely God. He went to the highest level and they said it can't be done. But because God saw our faith, God did it. There is an act to faith. You may like to call it desperation. You may like to call it anything. But how did that transfer happen? I only have one thing to say. Is that Jesus saw our faith. Jesus saw our faith. Can I ask you, what you are believing God for? Has he seen your faith? Faith that moves mountain is faith that can be seen. If you get what I'm teaching this morning, it will transform your life forever. There are two anchors for the life of a believer. One is prayer, the other is faith. There are two anchors. And I'm telling you that if you get this, there is nothing that shall be impossible to you. Faith that moves mountain has an act. You've heard people say, Buy a wedding ring if you want to get married. And people share testimony that it works. And yet some people buy it and it does not work. Is that not so? I've seen people who buy car key order. Believing God for our fall. 
and they are believing God and the wrath for did not come and the key order got lost so what is the difference between when it happens and when it does not happen for your faith to move mountains there are ingredients essentials so that you are not just acting because you hear my testimony something powers your act something powers what you do what you say and those are the things I want to share with you today. Jack your neighbor and say, are you still here? Jack the one you did not jack before and say your life is about to change. Can I ask you this morning, what do you have to do to convert your faith from an intangible force to a tangible force? For some people, it's their giving. For some people, it's their resignation. I'm not doing that job again, I beg I recall when my wife had to they were paying her peanuts and the shout was more than what they were paying I don't know, I don't think you understand that people who pay less are the most terrible bosses oh, I have witnesses also it's the same praise God the higher you go, the more difficult it is to be abused at your place of work because there is a system even when you come late, they can serve you query through the HR. But this one can even sack you at the door. You're coming here, go back home. There is a way peanuts people talk to people. And like I said to people, if you pay peanuts, you employ monkeys. And there's a way monkeys are treated. Right? So there are some jobs that for God to see your faith is resignation. So I would rather just stay at home. For some, it's to register a new company. For some people, it's to break up from that abusive relationship. To say, but no, they do. They have put a ring in your hand now for seven years. That's an handcuff. What are you doing? I've spoken to people, sit down with young ladies and say, why? Why are you tolerating him? He said, I am 29. I'm 31. If I let him go, will another one come? Letting him go is an act of faith. Because you see, when that ring enters your hand fully eventually, you will move from an handcuff to fetters of higher. I quickly share with you the building blocks upon which faith that moves mountains stand. Because I found out that many of us, what we do most times is that because a pastor preacher once shared a testimony, say, I will go and do that thing. I will go and do that thing. And because you did that thing, you will not see it. Somebody say, Ah, somebody gave his car. I will give my car. Somebody came on the pulpit and said, you know what? I shared a testimony and said, you know what? I just felt I should resign my job, started this new job. In five months, everything has turned around for me. He said, oh, that's God speaking to me. Faith is not built on another man's testimony. It's built on the testimony of God's word. Because there's no way I share a testimony I won't give you the whole detail. I can't tell you the processes that led to that testimony. Especially in our churches where we do sandwich programs. Testimony they put in my I just want to thank God. And that's the end. A process of five years to be explained in five minutes, in one minute. You can't get it all. Can I quickly equip you with those building blocks? Number one, faith that moves mountain is energized by what you hear. Somebody say by what I hear. Somebody say by what I hear. Mark chapter 2 verse 1 where we started out with. The Bible says, and it was noised abroad that he was in the house. It was noised abroad that who was in the house? So, the, the friends must have heard because it was noised abroad. It, it was, they, they had it. Jesus, wow, Jesus is in that house. 
what you hear matters in your faith journey. Can I say that to somebody again? What you hear matters in your faith journey. We live in a generation and a time where many people don't believe in miracles and supernatural power anymore. Everything you see is arranged. The way you doubt testimonies is so great. When you even hear that somebody was invalid and rose from the wheelchair, you say, did they not arrange it? It is not your fault. It is caused by what you have been hearing. On social media, you have seen a lot of people with arranged miracles, arranged testimonies, and that is why it is depleting your faith. Everything you hear has an effect in your life. When you watch a Nollywood film, or you see Apostle suddenly, prophet suddenly, then you begin to doubt every prophet. It's not the result. It's not why that movie was done. But that is the side effect of those things. So somebody comes to you and says, I see the Lord say that you should not travel. You say, I walk with God the Father. I walk with three of them. One, I get back in. Oh, you don't care what they say. Why? Because actually you are, their default setting is doubt. Anytime you hear prophecy, your default setting is doubt. Our default setting must be faith. The default setting of many in the church is to doubt miracles. The default setting is to doubt testimonies. Say, can we prove it? Can we prove it? Where are the receipts? Where? Many years ago, last year after resurgence in this same church, the Lord changed the genotype of a child from SS to AS. And some people still came and said, did you see the receipt, sir? I said, yes, I did. But it does not matter. Why are you always from the point of doubt? Why are you always operating from the point of doubt? Somebody say, ah, they just called me and gave me a car. I say, ah, he has slept with that man. Why are you always from a place of doubt? It is not how you are born. It is what you have had. Therefore, your faith is energized or destroyed by what you hear. Mark chapter 5, verse 27. The Bible says, and you have heard that, that story of that woman with the issue of blood. But do you know what started that woman on that journey to meeting Jesus? Can I share with you? Mark 5, 27. The Bible says, when she heard about Jesus, when she did what? Speak to me. When she did what? She came behind in the crowd and touched his garment. When she had. The starting point was what? Speak to me. What have you heard about the Lord? What you hear is so powerful. Your faith is affected by what you hear. This is why we preach the gospel. For we are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God. Unto what? Unto salvation. It is what? It means that as I preach the gospel, there is a virtue of saving that comes out of it. That was salvation. It was Zozo. As I preach the gospel to you, Zozo comes out. Zozo. And Zozo is deliverance. Zozo is healing. When you hear the word, healing can take place. Don't get distracted. Healing can take place. Miracles can happen. A lame man can start walking. I found that in scriptures and it is so. Because in Acts chapter 10, Peter was in the house of Cornelius. And as he preached, just speaking the word, the Holy Spirit came. There is what we call the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. And faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. You know all of us operate from a place of faith? Either faith in God or faith in the devil. Whether faith in divine possibilities or faith in doubt. But we all operate from a place of faith. And that is affected by what you hear. Have you, let me give you a vivid example. Hello, sir. Come. Are there people that you have never met, but you have made up your mind about them? How? Because of what I heard about them. 
because of what you hear about them. So those people, if they get employed in your company, they are not going to start from a place of trust. They are going to start from a place of having to prove themselves. And you see, you, see, you didn't hear that. He said, I will show them Shege. The Shege they are going to see, is it their fault? What he had. Or every one of us have had something about God. Every one of us have had something about Jesus. The difference between me being healed and you not being healed is what you had. The difference between me believing God for prosperity and you not believing is what we had. The difference between me and you believing God for a full church is what we have. What you hear can transform your life. Listen to this. Bonke we stay. Sit down, sir. In Ria Bonke Crusade. I don't know whether many of us were alive in Ria Bonke Crusade. But that man moved Africa for God. That man moved Africa for God. And you really hear Bonke say, Lord, now we want to pray for the sick. No. As Riyabonke preaches the Christ, as he preaches the Christ, the hearing of faith begins to deliver people. The hearing of faith begins to heal people. I've come to tell somebody that even right now, that cramp can stop. Even right now, you can receive your promotion because there is that which is the hearing of faith that delivers and sets a man free. The hearing of faith. If you will miss faith in your heart and decide, I will heart on these things. Then you will see miracles. That's the reason we share testimonies. To cause you to have faith in Christ and in the ministry. Let me say this to you. Do you know that when you pray at NSPBD, the way you pray and the faith you have is different from the prayer faith you even have sometimes in church. Real people came to church? Speak to me. Oh, you think I know where you joined? Please speak to me. Uh, where do you think all those people from the UK yesterday, where do you think they come from? From churches. Any pastor who is saying his people are not joining is deceiving himself. He said, <laughs> Hallelujah. Miracle meet you on the way. You see, that's the gist. When you keep going on, it will meet you on the way. Somebody say, he has turned into a message again. I've always, it's always there. If you continue. But if you are stopped, I said, let's close this service. And then you get to my... Say, what, what an experience we had today. It was just sad. The hearing of faith. The hearing of faith. One of the purpose of testimonies is not to let you know that God is great. And that a miracle, I'm anointed. No. No, sir. One of the purpose is to build up your faith in God. In ministries. Many people, like I was saying, did not respect NSPBD before. But when you join once, and somebody say, Ah, Pastor, my, the spinal cord of my, of, my, of my son, I saw one on Facebook recently, a boy that was coughed like this all his life. And in that prayer meeting, straighten up, because he called this testimony. Hey! Even if you are praying, it's it. It's 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 it. When you hear that kind of thing, say, I am an Even if it is emotions, it's okay. What has gone on is that you are saying, if God does it, he can do mine. That's why we share testimonies. To build your faith. Is somebody following what I'm saying? So the first one I said is energized by what? Are you still here? Be careful what you hear. Growing up, my dad ensured that in our house, there are things we don't hear. Those days in Yoruba land, there were a lot of things that talks about how the devil is so powerful. La Bionu, Agbarambe, all those things that we, when you, it can be, mm, La Bionu, mm. I, I, when you hear, Mm. And they always do it at night. When they start like this, you know, it's so terrible that even if you are not hearing it in your house, there are people in the neighborhood who have decided that everybody in the neighborhood must hear it. So they will increase the volume. And you say, mm. 
Now, when you hear things like that, is the reason many people my generation don't go to villages. Is the reason many people my generation don't like grandpas and grandma, but now their parents are old also, so they can't kill them. But the belief was that everybody who is too old is a witch. Especially if they don't, cannot stand straight anymore. Ah! A journey, eh? Why? Because of what we had. You can see how the devil affected the whole generation. Many times we are going to pray in churches on things that have no standard in scriptures. But because of what we have had, and pastors in that generation were generating prayer points from those events. Hmm. I hear something happened in us. There was a woman. She was taking all of their blood and all of them were dying. Ah, you will pray. That's Why? How did we get here? The hearing of faith. Is somebody following me? The hearing of faith. The devil ensured that a generation believed him by affecting what we hear in the media. Therefore, may the Lord raise generations that will take over the media. Amen. The airwaves affect a generation. I'm telling you, my generation was affected. Wow, I sound so good. Don't you think so? Glory. Hallelujah. Somebody rejoice. Glory. Amen. Amen. That's the way you sound. Oh my God, it's crispy. It's soft, baby. Hallelujah. Amen. The second thing is that it's built on the word of God. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Am I Daru Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm not there, so I don't need the feedback. It's supposed to be like a feedback system. Zan also. It's echo back. Oh yeah, move it. But I like the echo actually, but let them move it. Do you understand? Let me give you number two. Don't get distracted. The second thing is that it is dwarf. The first one, what did I say? Be careful what you hear. Spend the time on TikTok will destroy your faith. Except you choose who you will follow. Some of you need to get off social media and re-register because your algorithm is terrible. The kind of people you listen to and hear, that's what they keep suggesting to you. Sometimes myself and my wife will stay on TikTok and watching videos. Very enlightening stuff. Successful people. There's one guy that asks people, that asks billionaires in one minute, ask them questions. What, what, what's the best advice you ever receive? Uh, what, 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 what can you tell a generation that wants to make so much money? I mean, very enlightening stuff in one minute. Brilliant guy. How do you make your first, first million? What's the highest money you've made in a year? One guy said two hundred million dollars. I look at that and I say, and we continue. But you, what you are seeing is twerking. It's a problem. That is why you get married and you cannot stay in marriage. Why? Because your heart has been affected by what you hear. If your wife cannot twerk, it's a problem. You can't stay. If a lady just walk like this, she's twerking. You already, your head has gone. Why? Because you have infused yourself with so much terrible things. Unfollow some people on social media. Unfollow them. People are still built up, even on social media. You see, there was a time we said people should leave. No, don't leave. But watch what you look at. Be careful. Number two, it is built on the word of God. Mark chapter 2 verse 2, and he preached the word unto them. Jesus did not start out, he didn't start out with miracles. The Bible says he preached the word unto them. I have no respect and honor for a church that the word of the Lord is not valued. Why? Because the word of the Lord is first coming, is the first entrance to the miraculous. The key to the miraculous is the word of God. Check through scriptures. Check through scriptures. Jesus, apart from the time of Lazarus, uh, never prayed for a miracle. Never prayed in a miracle site. Never. He only spoke. Never. I'm not against prayer. Prayer is significant. Even while he prayed in the tomb of Lazarus, he said it in his prayers that he's praying because of them. 
So what would Jesus do? He spoke the word. He, he spoke the word. And, and I'm not against prayer. You see that we'll get there. He preached the word to them. While Peter, Acts chapter 10, you begin to read from verse 44. While Peter was still speaking in the house of Cornelius, the Bible said the Holy Spirit came upon them. Built on the word of God. You cannot live a life of faith. You can't move mountain if you don't read the Bible. Your faith is powered by the word of God. Your energy in the spirit is powered by prayer, but faith in the spirit is powered by the word of God. Therefore, you have a lot of people who are energized, but they do not have faith in God. Why? Because it's not built on the word of God. All true scriptures, the word of God being preached is the basis for the miraculous. Therefore, when the word of God is preached like this, like I'm preaching now, miracles begin to happen. Number three, what do I do to move mountains? Do you want to move mountains in this house? I hope you know that mountains are not those things that it taught us in geography. There are obstacles on your way to getting ahead. Number three, obey God's word. And I'll show you that in Mark 2, 2 11. Mark 2, open, open Mark 2, 11. Let me show you a secret there. Because many times when we read scriptures, we run and we race. Let me show you that. Mark chapter 2, verse 11. All right. Are you there? I say to you, arise. Take up your bed and go to your house. How do you tell somebody to arise who, was in, who is invalid? But Jesus said, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Read the verse that follow. Immediately he arose. That's obedience. Stop saying my leg cannot move. The instruction is, arise. The instruction is, arise. Stop saying, no business, nobody will come and sell that business. God says, you raise chickens. Say, what if I raise it and nobody's coming? The instruction is to raise chickens. Somebody say, what if I do that certification and I still don't have a job? The instruction is to take that course. That's the instruction. The instruction of heaven is clear. Arise. That man could say, boy, you know I can't. I need a help here. He arose. You know you can have faith and you will still not be healed. Sorry, uh, I'm getting you to some grounds I don't want to get to today. But you can have faith and still not be healed. Remember that story? Paul was in a place preaching. And scripture says there was a man who was lame at his feet. And he perceived that that man had faith to be healed. Paul saw him that he had faith to be healed. But was still paralyzed. So Paul took him by the hand and said, Arise! And the Bible says he stood up. He helped his faith. The faith was there. It could make him ill. But because there was no act to that faith, that mountain cannot move. Faith can be in your heart. But because there's no act to it, you will still be stagnant. That's why I say faith must follow with action. You know all of you who are married guys that are married in this house? We have to speak. Amen. Ah, God told me that Nancy is my wife. Nancy is my wife. After you have prayed for a while, God will now tell you, I've told her, how will she know? So you have to go and open your mouth and say it. There is an act to saying it. Somebody now say, I, I told her once, she left. When you are praying for a job, why did you not pray once and stop? Why do guys don't, why don't you do importunity when it comes to a woman's case? You know why you don't do it? Because your friend lied to you that you're a fine boy. You see, fine boys also live lonely lives. So. <laughs> I'm telling
telling you. I know what he's talking about. Ah, I, I read this. I read this uh, status around 11 a.m. I be 11 p.m. I be 1 a.m. this morning. He said, he said, everybody that's been checking on me, they are guys. Yeah, nobody's saying hello. How are you there? Are you hitting? Oh, sorry, brother. You have my deepest apologies. All true scriptures, the word of God is preached. And you must obey it. As I was praying for you today, I got God say, tell them to obey what I've told them. The miracle is in the obedience. Somebody say, I want to be fully persuaded. I want to be sure I can do it. I was not sure we can build this. I was not sure we'll make it in Lagos. But I was sure God was with me. And that's said to say, that's faith. That's said to say. It's in the obedience. When the Lord said we should come to Lagos, I had no finance here, only Jesus. And I prayed to him, where should we go to? And he said, Island. I said, why not my way? Do those places are cheaper. He said, Island. I remember one day I was praying in the house. And I was praying. I said, God, where will you send provision, oh God? Lembra Shombali Kabaliba Sotaya. You will send provision, oh God. And the name of a lady just kept dropping in my mind. Dropping in my heart. And I saw the picture. I said, ah, ah, it's been a while I spoke to this lady. And the Lord said, call her. So I stopped. And I said, Lord, I just want to share a vision with you. The Lord has asked me to leave Ilori and go to Lagos. And that's it. I, I, just, I, just, I just feel I should drop that here. And the lady said, you know, there was a money that had been hold for a while. A thousand dollars that was just paid. He said, I don't know. I didn't know what to do. I just knew it was for church, but I knew it was not my church. But I did not know who it was for. But as you are speaking, the Lord reminded me and said, this is for you. So please, sir, I am very sorry, but I will just change it. If you give me time, let me quickly change this money and send it to your account. How would that have happened if I didn't make that call? Obedience. God has walked ahead. The gist is that you have not walked in obedience. Nobody walks with him and loose. Nobody. I've always lived in obedience. If you don't obey God, you will not see performances. Remember that cool word of God, John chapter 2 verse 5. Mary said, and whatever he tells you to do, do it. Do it. One day I lie down in my house in Ilori, and the Lord said, it is time to change houses. I said, ah! House rent has not expired. I said, it's the time to change. I give you two weeks. You move out of this place. I called my wife. I said, the Lord has given us two weeks. He said, is it the one you say we will move and we will not move? I said, this one, no. We are moving this time. It's two weeks. The house I got was so cheap that my generator was rendered useless. One of the shocks I found out was that light still goes in Nigeria when I left that area. We had be, you see why you people celebrate Bande? I don't know what we could, they know the house. You could, we could have a whole month and light will not even blink. You know, the Lord said that house is for your, is, is, is my reward for you for this time. How much was I paying? A whole, a whole bungalow. If you hear how much I was paying, you will leave Lagos. <laughs> it's not 200k. Four bedroom. One, two. Okay, three. Three. And then the boy's cutter was going for 100,000. Eventually, I, I, because the person who was taking the house was always giving me trouble. I paid for it myself. How much? 100,000. <laughs> A whole compound for 300K. Please close your mouth. Uh -uh. That's why it's called the Lorry. What am I trying to say? That if you obey, you will enter into your rest. The reason your life is this difficult is because you don't obey God. Until God's people proceed in obedience, the mountain did not move. 
Remember, Jericho did not move until they proceeded in obedience. They said, Jericho had to fall. Joshua was a king, in an, was an army general. He understood war. Yet he told the people, you will sing around this mountain. If I had people like this one, they will be arguing with me. What is singing having to do with this thing? It's strategy we need. They were no strategy. They just kept around walking around them. And he said, when you move around that mountain, don't say anything. Imagine if you are in Jericho and you just peep and see these idiots just moving around the mountain. Not even talking to anybody. You think, even if it is that an idol is following them, they should at least be doing incantation. And I've said you should do that. I don't pray in tongues. You know how believers and tongues, tongues is your, is your number one weapon. And I say, move around that mountain. I don't pray in tongues. Some people will get to the middle and say, na, 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 na. The instruction is, be quiet. No, can, na, na, na. That's the reason many of us cannot even walk in the school of, in, in the word of the spirit. Because many times you want to lay hands on somebody, the Lord said, don't lay hands. Just speak. And you'll see dimensions. But how would they know you are the one? So you want to lay hands so that they can know that you are the one. So you lay hands, he fell. But as, he, as the person fell, the spirit also lifts. We can't because we are carnal. They move around the mountain and the Bible says, according to the instruction, on the seventh day, don't shout. Don't shout. Until you hear the instrument make a shout, then you shout. And then they shouted and the wall came down. I've been thinking about that thing for almost seven years. Is it decibel that fell it? Is it the noise? Uh, if it is the noise, then all this CAC mountain should have fallen since these days. Because people make a lot of noise on those mountains. So how did they fall? God came in. It is not the instruction. It is he who gave the instruction. It is not what he said. You can say there is no correlation between what he said and what you want. It is he that said it. Obedience. That's what moves mountain. It doesn't matter how ludicrous that instruction is. Once you establish it, it's from God. Press into it. Number four. It is sustained. Faith that moves mountain is sustained by a prayer, by a private life of prayer. A private life of prayer. Mark 1.35 Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. If Jesus prayed, you must pray. Oh. Matthew 14, 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone in that place. Mark 6, 46. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Luke 6, 12. Now he came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer. You must pray. Listen. Prayer is key. Elias was a man of like passion. And he prayed and he saw results. If we don't pray, we will not see results. Do you understand that? If we don't pray, we will not see results. Many of us don't want to pray. Listen. Faith and prayers are necessary companions on your journey to destiny. If you come by prayer, you know I say, people say, I come by prayer. Is that not a song like that? You'll be sustained by prayer if you actually come by prayer. Any man who teaches faith without prayer is a fraud. It's a fraud. It doesn't work. Prayer is the other leg of faith. Amen. And then number five, Faith is driven by all relentless passion for change. Do you have passion for change? Listen, I, I, I want friends that can change my life. You know the paralytic guy could not have gotten himself to Jesus' place 
But he had friends who were passionate for change. They heard about Christ and they knew he could change his life. You know what they did? They took that guy and brought him to Jesus. They opened another man's roof. Who will pay for that damage? They were interested in changing the man's life. How much do you desire change? What options do you have? Let me say this to you. Your faith only moves up a gear when you are without alternative. Your faith will move up a gear when there's no other option. But in as much as you can think of another option, in as much as you can think of another way, your faith will be limited. But your faith will move up a gear. Your faith will go up when you know it's either God or God. Have you been in a situation where you know it's either God or God? Do you know that those areas, you can believe God more? And he always show up. But the one you know that, ah, Uncle Tayo, Uncle Tunde, Uncle Bola, Uncle Kini, when you call all those uncles, you know, I've always tell people, nothing on you than building a church. Nothing. You see, your thoughts, we are see, I want to, want to. This one, the one will give you a car. This one are the people who, because that's how some of you think. Like if I can get, and that's why I, 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 I just think of those who labor for network. That sick thing, that labor for network thing. Labor for friendship, don't labor for networking. You see, all this network thing don't work. Oh. You have people around you who are billionaires, they won't give you one naira. Because unless the Lord send them to you, they will see you oh, in the rain. They will carry you. And they say, I'm sorry, it was so raining. The, the, the rain was so much today in Lagos. So much. And then they take you to their house and you saw four cars they are not using. It will never enter their mind that you need it. But when you go to their house, they even give you fruits or coffee. You don't go and they say transport. It never comes to their mind. Help does not come from the south. It doesn't come from the west. It doesn't come from the east. It comes from the northernmost part of Zion. He's the one who raised one and bring down another. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? That's what Jehovah does. That's the work of Jehovah. Don't get distracted. Just listen to me. There are things you can change. There are things you cannot. And then number six, finally, faith speaks the answer. What did faith say? Faith does what? You know, many of us, what we do is that we speak about our problems. But faith speaks the answer. What do you want? If you can define what you want, then you can get what you want. Can I explain this and break it down for you in the way you will get it? Remember Goliath? Have you read the Goliath story? For many days, Goliath was terrorizing Israel. And, and I perceive that boys would just sit down with their weapon and start just and say, Ah! Baba Goliath. Hey! You don't see his leg. Ah, Baba. If you get close to that guy, go keep it. See. Ah! On my hair, say, so stay for palace. If now you know, stay. Forget him. Who will face him? Ah! I saw his weapon. If you see his sword. And for years, from days, they were talking about Goliath. But David came. And David spoke to Goliath. Say, who is this uncircumcised Philist? The brother said, What did you come here for? You've left the sheep. It's not the sheep. He didn't want his brother to die. Say, no, 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 keep quiet. The guy said, ah. Uh-uh. So you people sit down here and you're talking about Goliath. He said, he spoke so much, they took him to the king. Imagine them taking a young boy to the king. Because he was speaking, he was not speaking about Goliath, he was speaking to Goliath. Faith that most mountain does not speak about the mountain. Oh, I know you need so much money. I know you need to pay your bills. But that's okay. 
Don't tell me what I know. Speak to the bills that they are paid. Speak to that house that it is paid for. Speak to that event that it is done. Speak that you are married. All of us, even in my family, we all are uh, late in getting married. We are all just late in getting married. You are still speaking about the thing. Sweetheart, can you speak to that thing? Faith that moves mountains, speak to the mountain. We are down, circumcised, Philistine. Oh, you today, when he saw Goliath, uh, Goliath looked like him, stood like that, and Ademide, he said, you, I'm going to feed your carcasses to the birds of the hair. I mean, you have to have mouth. You have to have mouth. In this kingdom, you have to have mouth. It's not all this humility does not work. You have to have mouth. You have to speak boldly. You say, well, we don't boast, we don't boast, we are not proud. No, we make our boast in the Lord. You must have boast. Read it. It's not pride. It's the God that, what, what that he knows. He said, listen, the bear came. The lion came. Okay, the bear came. The lion came. <laughs> I perceive he was even pitying the guy. I kill you all. Seven stones. Seven stones. He went and took seven sharp stones. He knew this was a sword thing. It's not. I will first of all kill him with my mouth. When the guy came, Goliath first of all spoke, said, Ah, am I a dog? Die. Oh, he finished like he, he said his own. You must speak last in destiny matter. Faith that most mountain will speak. Either you speak in your room or you speak outside, you must speak. You must speak. Listen to this. You remember the woman with the issue of blood? Verse 28. That woman with the issue of blood. You know what she said? You know what she said? The Bible says, For she said to herself, If I can only touch the hem of his garment. The literal Greek says, She kept saying to everyone that matters, That if I can only touch the hem of his garment. So, Dio, come. Those things come. Greats come. So, there, 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 is, there is me. Who is Jesus now? No, Jesus is not that tall. We use stone to kill him. Stephen, stay there. Stay, come, come close, come close. Come close. Then turn. Turn. Turn like you are going there. So that's Jesus. And we are going in a company. So be following me. See if I can touch the hem of his garment. If I can only touch the hem of his garment. I'm telling you, if I touch the hem. It, it, she's saying it, they are hearing that if I can touch the hem of this guy's garment, if I can touch, so the crowd was there, but she kept saying to herself, if I can touch, and then he touched the hem of his garment. And he turned around and began to say, who touched me? There were people all around, but he said, somebody touched me. Because this touch is not just a touch of, of people who just want to, you know, want to farm. I saw somebody yesterday say, if I don't snap with Pastor Jerry Eze like this, make, make I bend. There are people who go to Jesus' crusade like that too. I say, I was, I was close to him. We were side by side. That Jesus of Nazareth, we were side by side. No! He said, this is not that kind of a touch. I have not that kind of a touch. This one was a touch that virtue flew out of me. A mountain moved because someone touched but it did not start from that touch. Did you get it? It started from what she said. What she kept saying to herself. What she, what she continued saying to herself. Your deliverance is not what happened now. It's what you have been saying. Your testimony is that what you said came to pass. That's the testimony of Ransom House. That we confessed for years and for months. And today we sit in that completion of God's grace. Somebody saw it and said, ah, ah, how did you do it? I don't know how we did it, but we spoke it. Ah, we spoke it. Ah. Listen to this. The way we spoke it is the way you will say it. You have to say it. When my ministry starts, everybody comes to it. Everybody comes to it. I don't have a... When I start selling, people come for my skills. People come for... Before you graduate, you are speaking that way. So that when you graduate, but when you join them and say, oh, Welcome to the labor market. Come as you share. I've got on Shanua. 
Because your heart was speaking from your mouth was speaking from what is in your heart. Your heart believe is that it is hard and there's no job. So how is it that people say there is no job and they still want to get jobs? Think about it. How is it that you said there is no job and you still want to get a job? Can somebody get something from zero? There's no husband. Even look around some house. Is there a husband there? Is there a husband there? I will join people in marriage this year, next year, my hand will be paying me. Amen. No, I'm saying it. If it's you, it's you. If it's not you, it's not a problem. God will now bring those people and will join. Amen. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Why? Why do we say that? In that place where somebody says there's no husband, people are getting married. Yeah. In that place where they say Christian brothers are bad, I'm still giving good Christian brothers out. Kingdom marriage is not popular celebrities getting married. That is that is famous marriage. Media marriage, famous marriage. Kingdom marriage is two believers coming together and living and building a home for the Christ. That's you. That's you. You say you pick it. You, you say it. You pick it. You grab it. The prophetic word. You grab it. You will become what we say. He kept saying, what do you keep saying to yourself? I'm a billionaire. I teach, I teach purpose. I'm a teacher of God's word. My words are with great season with salt. Oh God. Light shines upon my path. I hang in dollars. There's somebody in this church that has been telling me, if I leave my job, it's seven figures. And I know it will happen. You know why? You can't keep saying it and it will not happen. Especially when you have the skill set for it. I prosper in all currencies. I prosper in all currencies. Reverend George was telling me, he said, I hope you are not praying to be rich in Naira anymore because can you hear me more? Even me, I don't understand, sir. But there is a wealth that comes in dollars. A standard of measurement of wealth. Have you ever seen them say, Dangote money went down in Naira before? The standard of measurement is dollars. Am I preaching prosperity message? I'm preaching the word of God. I'm preaching the truth of God's word. I can show you again and again in scriptures how it happened because they kept saying it. They kept saying it. They kept saying it. One of the adverts I love so much was Pastor Chris Aculimus advert. He says, so mightily grew the word. He said, in the city of Ephesus, so mightily grew the word and prevail. The word prevails. The word prevails. The word prevails. The word prevails. In your life, does it prevail? Yes, does the word prevail in your life? Yes, does it prevail in your life? Yes, does it prevail in your life? Yes, if the word prevails, jump on your feet and begin to speak some word. Begin to declare the 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 word. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, sir. oh yes, sir. I'm not little, I'm not little. Great things are spoken concerning me. Great things are spoken concerning me. Great things are spoken concerning me. I'm not sick, I'm not feeble. Oh, I'm fat, I'm flourishing. Even in old age, I'm fat, I'm flourishing. I'm like a river set beside the waters. I'm like a tree set beside the waters. I bring forth my fruit in my own season. In the name of Jesus, whatever I sell, buyers are coming. Buyers are coming. Buyers are coming. For my skill set, buyers are coming. In the name of Jesus. In the name of, I'm not limited. I'm not few. I'm not little. I'm not small. I'm not small. So mightily grew the world and it prevailed. So mightily grew the world and it prevailed. So mightily grew the world and it prevailed. There is the prevailing word. There is a word that moves mountain. Do 
you believe in your heart? Is your desire built on the word of God? Is he energized by the word of God? Are you a man of prayer? If you're a man of prayer and you believe God's word, then you speak it. Then you speak it. Then you speak it. I am not working in a small place. The window is open.